Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Sara Zimmerman Duterte are the country's top officials, its president and vice president respectively. But for the first time in a really long time, the government's top two officials are also cabinet secretaries concurrently. Marcos is agriculture chief, while Duterte is the education secretary. What are the highs, lows, and plateaus of their first six months in government as agri and education chief? Hi, my name is Beko Pin and I cover Malacanang. And I'm Bons Magsambol. I cover the Office of the Vice President and the Department of Education. And this is our Reporter's Review. Si President Marcos, sinanggap niya, or he appointed himself to the role, ostensibly, kasi wala siyang nahanap siguro, na pwedeng mag-handle ng agriculture department. Kasi ang laking bagay ng agriculture uh, when the new administration came in, especially because the cost of food was rising then and it's still rising now. Is food actually more affordable now, six months on? The day we're recording this, it is mid-December, malapit ng magpasko. Uh, according to the Agriculture Department's own monitoring, local red onion is at 380 pesos per kilo, sugar, refined sugar is 95 pesos per kilo, and the cheapest rice you can find in the commercial space based on the DA's monitoring in Metro Manila is 38 pesos per kilo. Medyo malayo pa yun sa pag-lower ng prices compared to July 2022. So after two years of implementing distance learning, Philippine schools have returned to face-to-face -face classes. So ito nangyari to sa time ni Vice President Sara Duterte. Uh, as uh, sitting education secretary, she issued a strong order mandating all students to return to their campuses. So some critics say bare minimum ito, pero it was only her uh, na nag-force talaga na i-mandate lahat ng schools sa face-to-face -face classes. Uh, of course, uh, former Education Secretary Leonor Briones was hesitant. So it shows talaga na what Sarah wants, she gets. A few months back, yung rising cost of sugar at one point umabot ng 100 pesos per kilo sa market, sa commercial space. After that, uh, the SRA, the Sugar Regulatory Administration, uh, released an order supposedly ordering or allowing the importation of X amount of sugar, which Malacanang later denied hindi daw yun totoo, hindi daw yun authorized. Uh, that led to investigations by a supermajority dominated Congress, pero specifically in the Senate, no? Parang na question doon pati si former Executive Secretary Vic Rodriguez. Hindi na siya ES. Um, hindi lang si Vic Rodriguez or si, si former ES Vic Rodriguez yung um, kumbaga, one of the casualties, although later on na siya uh, nag from the post following that sugar fiasco. Vice President Sara Duterte has also gone viral for all the wrong reasons. Siguro yung una natin maaalala is uh, yung video niya, uh, siya mismo nagsasalita ng Mandarin. So, ito, it went viral. Uh, people are criticizing her. They were saying that uh, wrong yung intonation ni Vice President Sara Duterte. At the same time, improper yung way niya ng pagsasalita. Pero sa diplomatic side, of course, it's a good will and it's normal actually for a, for a top Philippine official na mag ng ganitong language. Ni-release yung timing ng video kung saan yung mga tao is nag-reeling from the typhoon. So, instead of like uh, doing relief uh, operations, biglang nag-release naman yung Office of the Vice President ng ganitong video. Siguro yung pinaka-recent is yung sunblock issue. Sa gitna ng pagsasalita niya sa isang event, si Vice President Sara Duterte, tumigil siya at bigla siyang nag-joke na, ay teka lang, wala pala kong sunblock, natatamaan ako ng araw. Institution to have had one... Sorry, I'm sorry, excuse me. Hindi ako nags naglagay ng sunblock. So ito, uh, actually it drew flock online, especially dun sa mga critics niya. Pero at the same time, ito naman sa mga supporters si Sara Duterte, sinasabi nila na it only shows na marunong mag-joke si Sara Duterte kahit na sa mga ganitong pagkakataon. Siguro yung isa pa rin na uh, criticism sa kanya dito sa mga unang buwan niya sa pagka 
vice pangulo is yung confidential funds niya. So, sino nga ba namang hindi makakalimot dito sa confidential funds? So, naging headlines to for months. As we have spoken about many, many times no, during the campaign, uh, now President Marcos and now Vice President Duterte weren't really explicit or weren't very ex clear about their campaign promises. Pero very clear yung promise nila nung yung 20 peso per kilo na rice. Clearly, yun yung focus niya as president. Uh, kaya nga niya kinuha yung concurrent role as agriculture chief. Are we close to that? We are not. In fact, yung nga, yung prevailing prices closer to Christmas, 38 pesos per kilo yung cheapest. There is a specific place where you can buy rice for 25 pesos per kilo. Speaking of the DA, one of their proposals sa start ng Marcos Admin was to reintroduce the Masagana program. Ano ba tong Masagana program? Una siyang na-introduce under his father, the late dictator and his namesake, Ferdinand Marcos Sr. No? Um, in a nutshell, yung Masagana parang uh, allowed farmers to access loans via rural banks so they could afford uh, better seeds for their crops and better fertilizer for that was to address the rice shortage then uh, years later even experts now and then say na it was a failure kasi yung kalabasan nun uh, maraming banko na lugi a lot of banks na lugi siya kasi farmers couldn't repay them for the, repay their loans and things like that order niya naman para sa mga teachers and other deped officials na i-avoid yung makipag-interact sila sa mga estudyante. So kung matatandaan nyo, itong order na to lumabas dahil sa kaliwat kanan na pagsusumbong ng mga estudyante na nakakaranas ng pangaabuso sa kanilang mga guro. So uh, yung Yung logic nito na sinasabi ni Vice President Sara Duterte is para daw mag-instill ng professionalism. Nag-viral din actually yung sinabi niya dito na that our teachers don't have business drinking alcohol with our students. Again, yung pagkain kasi literal na gut issue siya. Um, and the President himself has said this, no, na parang uh, the average Filipino or the yeah the average Filipino will view world issues such as let's say the war in Ukraine, uh, any crisis worldwide through the lens of may makakain ba kami. So that's one thing that he definitely will need to focus on. The question is, since he is concurrent president and agriculture chief, isn't it time for him to appoint a full-time chief now? People from civic society and politics, including his sister, Senator Amy Marcos, have said that it's high time that the president appoint a full-time agriculture chief. When he was asked about this, sabi niya meron siyang checklist, kung baga parang bucket list, bago siya um, mag-appoint ng full-time agri-chief. Hindi niya sinabi ko nung laman ng checklist na yun. Pero by 2023, given yung global pressures, um, things that both we can control and things that we cannot control um, and when it comes to food supply and prices, it, it, it'll be definitely time to have a full-time agri-chief and we'll see if President Marcos actually heeds the call of both his allies and critics to pick someone to focus on agriculture uh, without any other uh, concern to think about. As a reporter covering Sara Duterte, I would want to see concrete solutions on learning crisis from the vice president herself. So ngayon kasi hindi natin nakikita yung epekto nito, pero eventually magdo-domino effect yan sa lahat ng sectors natin sa society. For one, paano tayo makakapag-produce ng quality graduates kung nananatiling palpak yung education system natin sa bansa? Yun ngang recent World Bank report, sinabi ng report na ito na ang Pilipinas ang may pinakamalalang learning poverty sa buong mundo. So isang manifestation nito is 9 in 10 Filipino students age 10 struggle to read a simple text. So just like her father, uh, Vice President Sara Duterte made a bold statement which is to solve the learning crisis in the Philippines in 6 years. Will she be able to deliver? Well, after all, our students deserve the best. Thank you.